welcome to our online lecture series for managerial accounting welcome to this new experience i hope all of you are safe and having a good uh, health inshallah this is a first series of uh, lecture for chapter number 8 i'll be uploading these uh, files on youtube so you can watch these videos and solve the questions which were given as an assignment although some of you have already solved those questions i'm very impressed from those students who have done it but again it's my responsibility so i'm making this video so that the students who did not understand on their own they can take a benefits now chapter number 8 is about performance evaluation remember in managerial accounting we said that managerial accounting the purpose of managerial accounting is to assist decision maker in uh, in making certain decisions one of the decision is the evaluation of performance that whether someone have achieved what was the target or they did not achieve if it was not achieved what are the problems which resulted in not achieving that those objective the basic or the important thing in performance evaluation is a budget we already know we discussed before that budget is basically a plan in terms of numbers right it's a quantitative measure of our planning that's what we call it budgeting so starting this chapter our first slide we talk about a flexible and static budget now we have already studied the master budget in chapter number 7 remember it was uh, we discuss about cash budget we discuss about sales and administration budget so those were the different budgets we studied previously right that budget basically we sometimes call it a static budget right the budget which you prepared before in chapter number 7 uh, we call it them sometime a master budget or a static budget why it is static because it remains unchanged even if the actual volume of activity differs from the budgeted level this is what we mean by a static budget it does not change however flexible budget is differ from static budget because here will uh, will show how the budgeted revenue and cost varies at a different volume of uh, different volume levels now flexible budget is part of a master budget sometimes we call it a static budget and is based on a planned volume of activity right as we said i i said earlier that flexible budget is different from a static budget right because expected revenue and costs you know are different at different variety of volume levels by volume levels i mean uh, the number of units which are sold remember the uh, sales budget when we prepare a sales budget we say that uh, i'm just referring it to the previous chapter for example in a sales budget and we prepared the sale budget on quarterly basis we said that okay the expected sale in first quarter is let's say 10000 and then next quarter it will be 12000 14000 those were the volume levels remember the number of units which are to be sold to achieve our sales target so this is what we mean by the volume levels right now this is an example given in your book on page number 354 it's a static budget of melrose manufacturing company they are a producer of small high quality trophies and they plan to make and sell 18000 trophies during 
Melrose uses a standard pause system as shown below on this table. Now if you look at this table, there is 80 is the selling price, expected selling price, which is uh, for one unit. Remember, these are all per unit cost. Standard material cost, what do we mean by standard means the budgeted, what we were supposed to spend in terms of material. This is what we call it, standard material cost. How much material should we use? What is the standard cost? Standard labor cost or we, in other words we call it budgeted labor cost for one unit should be 16.80. Standard or budgeted overhead cost is 5.60. Then we have budgeted or standard general selling and administrative cost is 15. Then we have fixed cost for a manufacturing cost which is 201,600 and general selling and administrative cost are 90,000. These numbers are given to you, right? So if, we, if you remember that, you know, it's very important in uh, any business to know what are the costs because based on the cost information, we know how much profit we are expecting to get. So here in this question, we have expected selling price of 18. Then we have expected unit level cost for these items, for material, for labor, for overhead and for selling general and administrative costs. These are all variable costs. Now fixed cost or manufacturing costs, some of them are fixed uh, manufacturing costs and then general selling and administrative fixed costs or 90,000. This is what given to us and based on this information we can prepare a static budget if you look at in our book on same information right that if imagine that this company is planning to sell 18000 trophies at is given in this question you can see that they are planning to sell 18000 trophies so what will be the cost for what will, uh, what, uh, sorry, first, what will be the total sale price will be 18, 80 multiplied by 18,000, 12 multiplied by 18,000, 16 multiplied by 18,000 all. So we get a total sales and total variable costs. Okay. What will be a total fixed cost for 18,000 units? I'm going to pause here. Can you tell me what will be the cost? Will there be any change in this number? No. Why? Because fixed cost remains same regardless of the number of units we sell. Whether you sell 18,000 or you sell uh, 20,000 units, this number remains the same. Okay. So on next slide, we'll see how the budget will be prepared. Right. How we are going to prepare a flexible budgets. Now, in flexible uh, budgets, right here it's very easy. We know that um, that uh, with the very bit, uh, little effort, accountant can provide management with the flexible budget for both budgeted and actual levels of act, uh, activity. Now. I'll explain to you also on the next slide how flexible and how static budgets are prepared. But again, flexible budget is very important tool in effective performance evaluation. The purpose of this is budget is to provide information to the management about performance evaluation of a production manager or a sales manager right what they have proposed before about sales and how much they have achieved whether they achieved more than what they were supposed to achieve or they or did they achieve less so that is a basic criteria for preparing a flexible budgets now preparing flexible budgets as we say this information was given already to us per unit was given so static budget we can easily prepare static budget at 18,000 units remember 
we expect to sell 18,000 units. So simply we multiply 18,000 by 80, you get sales. This will be our sales revenue. Similarly, we multiply uh, 12 with, 80, uh, with 18,000, 16.80 for labor cost, we get it same way. Overhead cost is same. Variable general selling and administrative expenses, 15 was for per unit. Multiply by 18,000, you get all the numbers. So now you can see here our contribution margin, which is sales minus all variable costs. So sales minus variable cost is our contribution margin. Then minus fixed cost, which is also given. So we'll have our net income. This is what we were supposed to have. This is a static budget. Why it is static? Because it is fixed. We expected to sell 18,000 and based on this one, that's it. Now, what flexible budget says that, okay, what if the number of unit is going to be a different? We may sell more than 18,000 or less than 18,000, right? If we sell 18,000, this column in the middle is same. If we sell 17,000 units, what will be the net income? If we sell 16,000, if we sell 19,000, if we sell 20,000, what will be the total income under each different alternative? So it's, I hope it is clear, it's very easy. Just we need to multiply with the same number of units with per unit price, but for fixed cost, we know it remains same. Uh, doesn't change regardless we produce 18,000 units or 16 or 20 or 19,000 as we know by definition that fixed cost remains same regardless of the number of units we produce. So I hope, I hope now it's clear how to prepare a flexible budget and a static budget from a given information it's easy. If you have any question you can send me an email. I'll be happy to answer your questions. Next one is about variances. What is variances? Variance means devi deviation from what we expect. This is what we call it vari variance. Now, for example, variance we expect to sell uh, 18,000 units and we sold 20,000 units. Now, this is also a variance, but this variance is a positive or a good variance or in, in other words, it's a favorable variance. Why we call it a favorable variance? Because if you sell more than the budget, your net income will increase. Right? So this is what we call it a favorable variance or some variances can be unfavorable as well. Right? If uh, our expected sales in our previous example, instead of 18,000, uh, the company sold 16,000 uh, units. So then in that case, it's an unfavorable variance. Similarly, in terms of costs, also we have a variance. We expect to spend 10,000 on, let's say, uh, material cost, but we spent 12,000, so we spent more. So this is also a variance, deviation from our budget, change from our budget. But this change, is it a good or bad? When you spend more than the budget, is it good or bad? Yes, it is bad, right? It is unfavorable. You are spending more than what you are supposed to spend. Similarly, if you spend less than what you are supposed to spend, then the same variance becomes favorable. You are spending less. Because if you spend less money, your cost is less, so your income is high. So this is what we call it uh, favorable and unfavorable variance. When a variance is favorable or unfavorable, it depends on the impact of that variance on the net income, whether net income will be increased or net income will be decreased. 
okay i'll continue to the next slide now the difference between standard and actual amount accounts are called variances right i already discussed this one variance may be favorable or unfavorable right when actual sales are less than expected it is unfavorable variance when actual sales greater than expected uh, revenue or sales it has a favorable variance or similarly for cost variances are not only limited to again for revenue right also you can use the variance to understand between the cost as well what was the standard cost standard means the budgeted remember keep this in mind standard means what was the budgeted cost and what is the actual cost when our actual cost is less than standard cost it's a favorable variance because we spend less money than what was budget similarly if it's an unfavorable cost variance when actual cost is more than the budgeted cost i hope it's clear now now next how we are going to interpret sales and variable cost volume variance right now sales volume variance is basically a difference between static budget right what is a static budget our standard budget in our previous example our static budget was 18000 units right and flexible budget is basically a budget which is based on actual volume how actually how much actually we sold it so this difference between budgeted and uh, flexible budget which is based on actual volume is what we call it a sales volume variance for example if our static budget is 18000 units right and then we adjusted based on uh, actual volume of units sold for 19000 so now it is a variance right now this variance is a volume variance i'll explain and now in the next slide you can see what i have just said based on the same information now if you look at this slide here this is the same now what is the sales volume variance what is a volume variance first you need to understand volume means number of units sold right how number of units sold is a volume a sales volume in other, in other words we call it sales volume now the difference between static budget this one 18000 and the flexible budget right this is what we call it a sales volume variance this whole is a sales volume variance everything will be changed based on the volume of the sales remember sales is the starting point it derives all the budget so if there is a variation or a variance in sales volume the whole thing will change so based on 18000 budget we already discussed this is our static budget but uh, in this example here when a company sold 19000 units right this is what we prepare a flexible budget already from the previous slide okay now we'll see a difference here with this is what we call it a variance volume variance if you look at first one which is sales volume variance how much is this one 18 and 19000 if you take a difference so here we are not concerned remember about plus or minus this is very important you need to understand you don't have to put a minus series here it all depends on this column whether it's a favorable variance or unfavorable variance now just logically consider this one that our budget was 18000 right but we actually adjusted our budget now based on the new numbers so it is now this is a flexible budget so based on these two differences what is the difference is 1000 so we sold 1000 more units so our sales is more than 1000 units right 
So now, is it a good variance? Of course, you sell more than the budget, so it's a favorable variance. Now, in terms of sales revenue, which is basically uh, just uh, uh, take a difference between these two, or uh, you can, if you want to calculate, it is 1000 multiplied by 80, which was a price per unit. Uh, it's 80,000. Either you take a difference between these two or we have a unit cost for all of them. You can multiply them. You can calculate it in the same way. Now for sales, it's a favorable variance because we sell more than the budget. But for costs, if you see here, all are un unfavorable. Material is more than what we were supposed to spend. Labor cost is also unfavorable uh, overhead is unfavorable variable cost is also unfavorable now how do we interpret these numbers this is very important right now why it is sales is favorable maybe our sales uh, manager has uh, done a really well job he put an extra effort to increase the number of units he sold, he sell, right? Or maybe uh, he gave a special discount, or maybe there were uh, some special circumstances that suddenly uh, the sales has been increased. Could be anything. So, so uh, in order to make a deep analysis, management must consider not only this uh, factor, they must look into deep into this one. What are the reasons for increase in sales for this favorable variance? Now for unfavorable variance, remember it is very common that of course we will have a high unit cost because unit co uh, variable cost depends on the number of unit we sell. If you sell more unit variable cost definitely here it will be higher for material, for labor, for overhead and we are going to have a unfavorable variance right now if you look at a contribution margin which is favorable right and then our net income is also favorable more than the budgeted so this is how we look at a sales volume variance if you look at all these numbers it's very important to see here that Maybe if I see from my side, I can see here, okay, that sales manager has done an excellent job because sales has been increased. So he must be commended, right? Now, the analysis, for example, is it a complete? Maybe if you are a decision maker and you have to reward this marketing manager, maybe you, you need to look more d deep into these variances. Oh, is there a special circumstances that these sales were increased, right? How much a new customer he has won? For example, is there any increase in the market share, right? Or could be just an unexpected uh, increase in demand, right? Or maybe he reduced a price, gave a discount on something and he increased the sales, right? So that's why it's very important that we look at these numbers into more detail, right? So something it is relying on this is not only a best option. You need to look at deep into the reasons for these factors. Now for costs, as we know, um, since you, you it's a per unit cost, so if total number of units increase, so total variable cost will increase. Okay. But for fixed costs, here in this scenario, there is a changes in the fixed cost, right? For flexible budget, it is. Uh, sorry, sorry, there is no changes uh, for uh, fixed cost because fixed cost remains the same. There is no change, but for uh, net income, there is a change. Okay, now I'll move to the next slide. 
that how do we interpret I already discussed the same thing now you can see on this slide that in a standard cost system standards again means in budgeting in a budgeting or in a budgeted cost system right marketing managers they are the one who are responsible for the volume variance because sales volume drives the production how much you know they must produce so production manager have no control over volume variance production manager is responsible for material for labor for overhead costs or for a production cost but he has no control over how much sales it will be right so in this case in this example as we can see that uh, marketing manager he exceeded the sales by 1000 units as a result his uh, uh, he will have a favorable revenue variance right and unfavorable cost variance but again it is misleading right why they incurred high cost because it manufactured and sold the more units than planned so relying on this one information and penalizing or uh, discouraging discouraging production manager for high variable cost is not a correct way so that's why we need to look more detail into the variances which we will study later in this chapter how to break down these variances into different areas I hope it's clear now I'll move to the next slide which is about how we are going to compute and interpret the flexible budget variance we know that for performance evaluation management compares actual results to a flexible budget based on actual volume of activity this is very important now in our example just look at these uh, information right uh, we, these informations are given that actual per unit amount during 2018 were given as below right now for the same example this was the standard per unit amount for sales for those variable costs but actually this is what happened the actual cost at the end of a period becomes this one that for some reason you sell something for 78 real instead of selling for 80 the marketing manager sold the product for 78 real maybe this could be a one reason that he had a high sales previously variable material cost is decreased actually not increase from the budget similarly labor cost is uh, increased right but uh, variable overhead cost is more than the budget and variable general and selling and administrative costs are less than the budget these information are given right so now what we will do is we will prepare a new concept which we will prepare a flexible budget now flexible budget means we change our basic budget based on a new number of units which we produce right and we will not compare this one 18,000 if you remember before it was 18,000 right I'm j this is just a previous slide right and a flexible budget was 19 so these two number of units are not same if you compare here it's not a good idea to make a performance evaluation is better to change look at this one budget flexible budget this one and compare it with the actual one this becomes uh, no more relevant remember for performance evaluation because we did not sell 18,000 we sold 19,000 units so it's better to compare flexible budgets with the actual budget right so this is the actual budgets so we when you go to the next slide you'll see how we prepare this is flexible budget from the previous slides 
based on 19,000 units multiplied by the uh, unit variable cost for each one and this is now our actual results. Now how we cal calculated this one you just need to pay attention. Sales revenue, what is the sales revenue? 7 is 19,000 multiplied by 78. Then uh, material cost 19,000 multiplied by actual from here 11.78 then similarly others you can go just back to previous slide and see what are the actual results and then these numbers will be calculated it's clear yes now for fixed cost these are given remember this these are given in this scenario that the total fixed the actual fixed cost are this one 208,085,000 this is our actual results actual fixed cost 295,000 is actual fixed cost given as well in the question now we look at a difference right this is how we compare a flexible budget variance. So now our budget is flexible. We uh, flex, uh, it is flexible. Now you can see, okay, sales revenue. It is before it was favorable. Now it is unfavorable. Now it gives you a clear idea that why there was an increase in sales, right? If you prepare with the static budget before you compare, it was a favorable budget before. I'll go back again just to show you. See here, before it was favorable because we prepared, compare this and this. But when we look at now for a flexible budget, you look at here, same one becomes unfavorable. Why? Because our sales are less than what we were supposed to have based on 19,000. And we know that we have seen that it is 78 sales price is 78 so we gave a discount and that's why we have a unfavorable sales variance okay now if i look at next one for material we, this, after adjusting it is 4180 you can see from here uh, flexible budget means our budgeted was to, the material cost was 228000 but we spent 223,000 so we spent less it is a favorable variance but if you look at a labor variance which is right which is 319,000 was the budget but we spent this one so if you this minus this you get an unfavorable variance you can write it as a minus or you can just keep it as it is it's up to you both are okay as long as it is written is it is favorable or unfavorable overhead budget is same it is unfavorable this one is uh, favorable and contribution margin is unfavorable fixed cost again for manufacturing it is increased and for this one it is uh, decreased so it is favorable so overall if you look at a net income it is from um, 289,000 to 243,000 so it is decreased so overall it is an unfavorable net income so now you have seen your analysis has completely been changed from this one to this one if you look at a net income here it was favorable Right. So if you are a decision maker, you want to make a performance evaluation, you must understand how budgets are prepared and how they are adjusted. So this is the reason that when we use a flexible budget, the same net income becomes unfavorable. I hope it's clear now. Now I'll move to the next slide. Any question here? Just send me an email to discuss this. you can again uh, if you see here this is only a number these are again these are all all, all, all sorry these are all in, in need attention from the management they need to have an further investigation right 
why it is favorable why it is unfavorable is there any reasons remember finding these numbers is easy but finding who is responsible for unfavorable variance what are the reasons is not an easy job in a real life scenario no one is going to accept the blame now next slide about calculating sales pr uh, price variance right sales is very easy is not difficult right flexible budget and actual uh, results are based on actual volume of activity therefore flexible budget variance is uh, related to sales price not to the sales volume we can see here right actual sales are 19000 multiplied by 78 right you can see here there is an in decrease in price this is the actual price at which we sold and expected or budgeted sales were 18000 times 80 so this are the budgeted sales and difference of this is a favorable total sales volume volumes right so there is a favorable sales variance okay 42000 either you can calculate this way or you can calculate through this way it's also a same thing which is uh, uh, 1000 is the change in the number of unit from 9, 18 to 19 so 1000 times 80 is uh, the sales volume variance 80000 which is favorable right and uh, but the sales price variance this one uh, which is uh, reduction in a sales price which is 2 multiplied by 19000 you get 38000 which is unfavorable so difference between these two is 42000 so our overall sales variance is favorable again what are the reasons for these uh, variances right If, if we see here uh, this analysis that if we reduce a sales price right if we reduce a sales price it has a favorable impact on sales volume variance means sales have increased right but if you look at a price variance we see that it has an unfavorable variance right now all favorable and unfavorable variance is it is it good or is it bad it depends again on a situation in order to give a final answer why it is good or bad right you it's just a signal for a management to investigate why there is a decrease in price why sales manager in decrease the price what was the reason who authorized it or what was the situation which led to the decrease in the price what was the reason so again management need to investigate this one to find an answer now also there are some human elements associated with flexible budget vary variances right so again flexible budget cost variance basically gives insight into management efficiency okay it gives you an uh, insight you can see uh, for example in this case that uh, uh, this company had a favorable material price variance right if i look at here material variance you, you can see first one here material variance is favorable very clearly 4180 is a favorable variance okay so it shows here that it is uh, for uh, that uh, for example some detail what was the reason why uh, they had you know um, uh, favorable material variance maybe uh, the purchasing department made a good deal with the supplier they had negotiated very well with the supplier for price concession or they use they got special discount or some of the money they save in the delivery right or again maybe they purchased a low quality material could be anything right so that's why cost variance also need careful analysis right 
so favorable material again could mean that purchasing agents are good negotiator or it might be caused by paying low prices for inferior goods so whatever it is you need to investigate so that's it for this session i am going to end my lecture so next time in a next class or a next session we will start a new slide for, uh, starting from chapter number from uh, sorry from slide number 18 to the next level if you have any question please feel free to contact me so next time we'll start from this slide but today we stopped at slide number 17 this is the last which we have done today again solve question carefully this is a good chance for you to listen to the presentation again it's a new experience for all of us i hope we all learn from this experience and i wish you all the best for your stay at home and hope you all stay safe in case you have any question just send me an email thank you very much best of luck